thank you for all your calls and comments on the subject of Christmas cards. Uh, as I say, I only got mine done at the absolute 11th hour yesterday. Year on year on year, I swear that I will write them early. I'll, d- I'll have a nice easy time doing just a few a day and I'll be able to send them second class and every year it's exactly the same. I leave it till the 11th hour. I'm posting them at the last minute. I have to put first class stamps on them, which cost me a fortune. Um, so tell me about you and Christmas cards. Whose job is it to write the cards in your house? Bet it's the female half of the partnership, if you happen to be in a male-female partnership. Um, do you make your own? I'd love to hear from you this morning. If you are a Christmas card maker, do you insist on actually handcrafting Christmas cards? I've had one or two like that this year. I had one that someone had actually filled with sparkly glitter or something, and that's now all over the carpet. Thank you very much indeed, Leslie. Um, and, and do you get Christmas cards for the person who used to live at the address that you now live at? Every year, without fail, I get cards for, for addressed to the previous occupants of my flat. And I've lived there for over ten years. So there is somebody, or actually several people, who are sending these people Christmas cards, and they've not lived there for over a decade. Tell me about you and Christmas cards this morning. Have you sent any this year, or are they an old-fashioned waste of time and money? And you can easily perhaps get round the Christmas card conundrum and cost by sending a Facebook message, uh, a tweet, or even an e-card. Christmas on BBC Radio York. Well, this year, it's when we turn the lights on in St Helens Square. Oh, that was so Christmassy! The first time the tree that you bought, which is way too big for the stand, falls over. I'd like to say when it starts snowing, but actually it's when the brandy sauce arrives on the supermarket shelves, isn't it? Your home for Christmas. BBC Radio York. So we are talking Christmas cards this morning. Thank you for sharing your policy on them. Whether you're still sending them out or whether you've decided it's an expense that you can well do without. As I say, I know one lady, um, and I'm sure there are others who've got bigger bills than this, but her Christmas card bill alone this year was over 80 quid. Is it still worth doing? Is it something that you insist on as part of a traditional Christmas? I'll tell you, someone who's probably very glad that we are still all sending Christmas cards, Sharon Little is the Chief Executive of the Greetings Card Association. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning, Jonathan. What are the stats for us sending our Christmas cards this year? Are we still doing it? We're going to send over a billion Christmas cards in the UK. We love Christmas cards. In fact, we love cards of all descriptions. The UK is the greeting card capital of the world, and we send more cards per person than any other nation. I I I mean, there is a moment at which in this I've got to say, you would say that, wouldn't you, given the uh, the, the title of the job? (laughs) Do other people send Christmas cards? I mean, do the Germans send Christmas cards? Do the Americans? Do the Chinese? Do do people in other countries, do, do they have Christmas cards in the same way that we do? Uh, they do. They do in, in certainly in the States and um, especially in Northern Europe, they do, and Germany. Um, but uh, we we love cards even more than they do and we send <laughs> even more. Of well, we, them. Lo- we love them unless, like me, you, and I've confessed it, you leave them till the 11th hour on the very last day of first class posting so it costs you extra and you're sort of sweating on the, the whole process of, uh, of sending them out. Is there any sign of a decline? Because we live in a digital world, we live in an e world you've been able to send an e-card for ages you can put a message either individually to people or to all your friends on facebook and you can save yourself well in the case of this lady i know who spent 80 pounds on christmas cards you can save yourself all that money and you can save yourself a lot of time but the whole point about sending cards is that spending that time thinking of different people shows that you really care and that's what people really appreciate about it and the other thing that they really appreciate is the handwriting because you it's it's probably the only time now when you actually see other people's handwriting. Yeah, and, and you realise how bad it is. Bit, <laughs> there's a little bit of magic. doesn't matter how bad the handwriting is, there's a little bit of magic in ink on paper. You know, um, there's actually been some scientific research which has shown that receiving cards is far more emotionally powerful than receiving a text or an email with the same message. It produces all of these happy chemicals in the brain. And people, it's, it keeps on giving as well because people don't delete their cards like they would delete an email they display them proudly in their homes and that's because uh, that it's it's a message a personal message from their friends and their friends are being represented in the room uh, th- uh, 
you know, after afterwards. You it know, won't, it, it won't happen. It, lasts. This, it won't happen this year, but for various reasons. But it's always been a tradition in my parents' house that um, strange little bits of either green or red string have to be rescued from the Christmas box, tacked to the wall, and Christmas cards have to be hung up like they, <laughs> they were decorations. And um, I, I string mem- mine across the windows, yeah. across the tops of the windows. A certain member of my family insists on going through all your Christmas cards to um, to to see who's been been in been in touch with you just tell me is there a trend away from them i mean i know that you're there heading up the industry so you don't really want to say this this morning no we saw a slight decrease of 0.01 percent i don't suppose you're having sleepless nights about that (laughs) we've really bucked the digital trend i used to i I admitted this on air the other day i used to know someone that worked in the greetings card industry and the strangest thing he used to say was sometime in april or may said i've just bought two and a half tons of uh, of cotton wool and i said what what on earth for he said because we're making the christmas cards and we're sticking the bits of snow on santa and on snowmen and things april or may Yorkshire is a huge base Yorkshire is a huge (laughs) base for greeting card publishers there are lots of publishers in York and all around Yorkshire. Well, we'll we'll carry on writing them and sending them, even if it is rather late in my case. Sharon, happy Christmas to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Sharon Little, the Chief Executive of the Greetings Card Association. What about you and Christmas cards? An important part of your year, an important part of the Christmas routine and ritual, or not? Let us talk to Will, who's on the line from Helmsley. Good morning, Will. Morning, uh, Jonathan. Christmas cards for you, an essential or a waste of time and money and too much bother? Oh, we have them and we we send them and we like to receive them. But we've got a tradition in our house. Um, I do a survey of of what type of Christmas cards every year. Um, I started doing it, oh, I can't remember when it was, a few years ago. We didn't get a single nativity Christmas card. And I thought, this is ridiculous. It's Christmas, it's the, the Christian festival and not a single card. So I thought... What, what cards are people sending us? And the last three years, the most popular card has been the Robin. Um, and I, th- I think this is wonderful. So what, did you, did you have like a tabulated thing with Robin's nativity yep. scenes and you put ticks in boxes or something? I did, yep, yep. Um, um, Robin's, old English um, scenes, Christmas trees, Father Christmases. That's and fantastic. Well, oddly, I have brought all the Christmas cards I've received into the studio this morning. Uh, there we've got three sparkly Christmas trees on one. There we've got a sort of winter scene. It's some uh, two people pulling a small child in a, in a sled that's, that's got a Christmas tree in it. Yeah, that's uh, the oldie worldie one. That's a badger. Um, a Christmas badger. This is a street scene. This is a very really nice card, actually. It's a sort of like a it's like a Dale Street with someone herding uh, sheep up. This is a big uh, silver star with a bow on it. Ah, and there we go. The first nativity scene. There yeah, you go. That's from the, oh, that's from Faye and Alistair. There we are. Proper proper the, Christmas one. Yeah, the nativity scenes have made a comeback actually because I think it must have been five or six years ago we didn't get a single one, and last year it. it the nativity scenes made it up into, I, I can't remember exactly, but I think it was fourth or fifth place. <laughs> so they've definitely made a comeback. Um, of course, we're guilty because we I've only sent three nativity cards to particularly special friends. You're um, contributing to the problem. I am. Well, all the rest of them. I, I, no, uh, the rest of the cards I've sent are children in need. Ah, well, I was going to come on and ask you and say, um, there are some people I know who can be a bit sniffy about these things, and some people believe that it is naff to send charity cards, and they insist on going to the most expensive department store they can find and buying their sort of luxury Christmas cards, which may, you know, send 5% to charity, but they don't go down the Oxfam shop or save the children or, you know, what, what crisis at Christmas or something. Well, what is your yeah. policy when it comes to where you get them from? Well, we, 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 I got the children in need ones this year because I thought, who am I going to support? And I thought, that's as good as any. Uh, it, uh, but it isn't the, 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 where the cards have come from. It's the personal message that I write inside every one that counts. Do you? Yes. Everyone gets a different message. Well, a, a, an appropriate message. That's really nice. Uh, do you struggle to think of things to say? I was struggling yesterday at the eleventh hour. The people that were down the bottom of the list didn't get much of a personal message. Well, you, you, there's always. You, it depends at where you know them from. Some people are, are from work, so you write, "Thank you for supporting my business over the year," and blah blah blah. How many did you send this year, Will? Oh, I can't remember. 
Um, uh, I, I bought oh, I bought two boxes of of the children in need ones. There must have been twenty in each box, so that's forty. There's a few left, just in case some we've forgotten someone. But, and and it's know. not a cost that you resent. No, not at all. Well, lovely to speak to you this morning. Thanks for joining us on the program, William Helsley, who does his own Christmas card survey. And, yeah, the nativity scene seems to have disappeared from a lot of cards. The Robin is number one, apparently, and Old England at number two, and Santa Claus, Father Christmas at number three.